What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video Hope you all are having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am today We're gonna be talking about cheating on tests But before we get into that if you could press the like button I would really appreciate it It helps the video do better and I'm not kidding if you like the video You'll never get caught cheating on a test again. No joke. No scam. It actually makes you invisible Uh, don't don't fact check that but trust me if you press the like button You can cheat on every test and you'll never get caught uh, test it out and press the like button right now You know why not you have nothing to lose also comment the word test down below below if you're hyped for the story and without further ado let's get right into it now before we get into it I have to clarify I would never advocate cheating on tests if that's what you get from this video well then I had nothing to do with it me a, a great scrubby like myself would never advocate cheating however this is how I did it when I was in high school okay and middle school and basically every level of school you see cheating on tests is, uh, is an art form you know much like Picasso creating a vision painting something that requires such patience and care that it needs to be carefully studied and examined for years to come I was really 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 good at cheating on tests like so good to the point that a lot of my methods still are undetected to this day and my brother uses them when he's in school but uh, a few of my favorites are as follows one of the classics that I got away with in my math class was there was a girl who was a student aide in my uh, teacher's first period and she would grade the test and she would grade them right after they were handed in and his first period class for some reason was really fast at taking the test and I had it in sixth period so what I did is I uh, you know I put on that little scrubby charm I hit on her a little bit and in return she would send me pictures of the answer sheet before I got to class and I know what you're thinking scrubby it's a little rude to flirt with the girl just to get answers to a test and you're right it was a little rude but I never got any less than a 95% on any test some people get too caught up in cheating and they don't understand the art form of getting just enough answers wrong where nobody asks questions if you kill a test too good if you pop out 100% on a test where everyone else fails it's really obvious that you cheated so you need to understand the type of people that are in your class for example if you're in an accelerated class going with a low A every time or a high IB is guaranteed that you're gonna get away with it. But every now and then I would try to help somebody cheat on the test and they wouldn't understand the system and they would go out of their way to get a hundred. So one of these times I flirted with this girl and I ended up getting the answers to the test and a friend of mine who sat next to me was like, hey dude, I really need to pass this test. I'm grounded until I get my grade up in math. And so I say, okay, here's the answer sheet. Don't get a hundred because everybody is getting C's on this test. You need to get a high or low B. That's the zone of safety. And of course, him being like, oh, I need to raise my grade point average decides that he's just gonna go out of his way and get 100% on the test because that's not gonna look suspicious at all. The kid failing the class suddenly pulling off 100 on the hardest test we've had in the semester. Definitely not gonna raise any red flags. So whatever, homeboy goes out and gets 100 on the test and obviously red flags are immediately raised. He gets pulled aside and the teacher basically says, I know you cheated. And my friend, I, I'm seeing this happen, the conversation, because it's right after we took the test. I, I'm, and I'm trying to mouth to him, please don't snitch. Because if he snitches, it's over. Because if he snitches, they're gonna check my phone because they can do that in school. Which is really weird. If you're a teacher and you wanna look through my phone, you're not gonna like what you see. Trust me, I can promise you that. But regardless, if they check my phone, they're gonna see text between me and the student aid she's gonna get in trouble I'm gonna get in trouble so I'm hoping that he doesn't snitch and thankfully he doesn't snitch he just gets a zero on the test and stays grounded but that's an important lesson to remember guys if you're gonna cheat on the test don't aim for a hundred you gotta roll with the crews of the people around you you can do better but not too good. You don't want to raise suspicion. Also, I know some people decide that they're only going to cheat towards the end of the year when their grades are low, but if you're going to cheat, you got to open strong and cheat from the beginning. Because if you're an F student and you suddenly start pulling off good grades, it's really obvious that you're cheating. No teacher is dumb enough to think that you're just working really hard and suddenly paying attention. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. One of my favorite stories of uh, cheating on tests was what I call the Olympic shuffle. And it was basically a system of running tests, almost like an Olympic run. You know, and they have to pass off the baton. We did that with the answer sheets multiple times in one class period. I nicknamed it the Olympic Shuffle because it was, of course, of my own design. I am something of an architect when it comes to cheating on tests, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, what would happen is there was a girl at the front of the class who was really smart and would generally get really, really high grades on tests. 
and she was really good friends with me and my friends and uh, she of course was corrupt <laughs> I'm not sure why to be honest. She didn't have to let us cheat off of her, but she was really cool about it So, you know, uh, Brittany if you're watching this shout out to you You're a real one and I will always remember you I'm doing the thing from Hunger Games where they put their fingers in the air right now Just to signify that Brittany was in fact a real one. No joke. No scam Brittany You were the realist so whatever Brittany would complete her test and uh, would basically get anywhere from a 95 to 100 percent guaranteed she would pass it back to my friend and and just to switch it up a little bit, we would purposely try to get three more questions wrong than Brittany if it was a hundred question test, okay? If it was only ten, you could, there's more room for error. But she would pass it back to my friend, and if Brittany got a hundred, then he would get like a 95, and then he would pass it left down the row to me, and I would get like an 88 or a 92, somewhere in that range. I would pass it back two more desks, which was a pretty interesting move. I had to do a hook shot. I would flick it around so it would go around the person behind me onto that kid's desk. He would cheat and so on and so on until it got to the really dumb kids in the back of the class who were fine with cheating to get a 75%. The reason we called it the Olympic Shuffle though, and not just the Shuffle, was that we were great at it. This teacher would brag at the start of the year how he was so great at catching kids who were cheating and how nobody ever got away with it with him. Which was cool and all, except for the fact we literally cheated on every single test, even the final exam. So how this guy managed to proclaim himself as an expert and we got away with him meant that we had a level of skill that only Olympians have. And the best part is I know it was actually just our skill and not a lying teacher because every other kid who ever tried to cheat in that class outside of our group was caught almost immediately. So I guess what I'm saying is if there is an Olympic event for cheating on tests, I'm probably gonna be a gold medalist. I'm like the Michael Phelps of cheating on tests, okay? Now, the Olympic shuffle is not something I would recommend because it requires everybody to not be a snitch, and that's one of the hardest parts of cheating on tests that people struggle with, is finding a group of people that aren't like, gonna instantly snitch on you when their grade is on the line. Now, me, I could take a whole police interrogation before I'm gonna snitch on anybody, okay? The police could have the lights in my eye. Tell us what we need to know or you're going to jail for the rest of your life. I ain't snitching, dog. I don't know what you're talking about. And that's because I'm a loyal person who knows the hustle. If you're gonna cheat, you have to accept the risks. And part of the risk is, you might go down with nobody else but yourself. And that's something you have to understand. And there's been a few times I've been interrogated, alright? I'm not gonna lie, I'm good at cheating, but I've been caught once or twice. I can't pretend that I'm perfect. And when I was caught and they would ask me, was I alone? I would always say, Yes, it was just me. And every time they would buy it, because for some reason, whenever somebody admits something once they're found guilty, they never think you're actually, like, uh, lying to them? I don't know why. I mean, I was willing to cheat on your test, you think I'm not willing to lie to cover up for my friends? But like I said, me, I could take an iron interrogation, alright? Waterboard me for all I care. I'm not a snitch. And it's hard to find people who are like that. And if you are a snitch, I, it's okay, because I get it. You don't want to get in trouble, you don't want to go down alone, that's fine. But that's the hardest part about cheating on tests, is finding people as rock solid as you. One of the kids I would cheat on tests on was named Jacob, and he was literally more rock solid than me. The kid literally got suspended instead of snitching on us. He got caught during a, uh, a cheating ring in our physics class. And basically what happened was there was five or six of us cheating on a test, and he knew it because there were numbers in the order of who it was supposed to get passed to. Kind of like an Olympic shuffle, but with a less professional squad, all right? We had some rookies on the team. And we got caught and the teacher knew that there was more than one person cheating and they threatened him with suspension unless he snitched and he still didn't snitch. So Jacob, if you're watching this, you're a real one. You single-handedly made all of us pass physics and if it wasn't for you, we would have all gone down. And that's how I knew that you were the realest person I've ever met. I really hope he gets a job as a CEO for like a pharmaceutical company or something because that's the type of realness that needs to be rewarded with some cold hard cash. There he was, sitting on the chair. The dean looked him in the eyes. Tell me everything. No, Jacob replied. For it is my loyalty that you cannot buy, Mr. Principal. No threat, no siege will make me speak. The loyalty of my friends is what I truly desire. Uh, probably not actually what he said, but it's pr pretty close, um, maybe. Now, like I said, I wouldn't recommend cheating on tests. If you can pass legit, that's fine. I just was never really made for school. That's why this YouTube thing worked out is because it has nothing to do with school. You know, I just kind of talk about stuff and somehow it works. So getting through school was really my only option. Something else you need to consider when you're cheating on tests is sometimes you can't cheat. Sometimes you got to take an L. You got to do a decoy fail. No one ever passes every test unless they're a genius. 
genius. And trust me, if you're needing a cheat on test, you're probably not a genius. I mean, I was a genius on cheating on test, and you could argue that, you know, the uh, resourcefulness of me and my comrades is up there with being an actual genius. But something you need to do sometimes is called a decoy fail. You fail a test on purpose, that way the teacher doesn't start to get too suspicious of you and your squad getting too many A's. Oh, and also, you can't sit next to your squad. That's cheating 101, but that's an easy one that people get busted for. The reason we call it the Olympic Shuffle, the reason we have all these things where we're splitting it up and trying to spread things throughout the class is because it's way harder for a teacher to prove that you're cheating when you sit 13 seats apart than when you all sit right next to each other. If all you guys sit right next to each other and get around the same grade, it's pretty obvious that you guys cheated. If you guys sit across the classroom, how in the world did you cheat? Teachers are still dumb and don't know technology or the old-fashioned Olympic shuffle, so you can't cheat with people who sit next to you. I mean, you can, but you're running the risk of getting caught way, way, way more. Like I said, there's an art to it, and I'm not expecting all of you guys to be perfectionists at cheating like I was, but hopefully you can take something away from this video and learn it. And remember, a steel will is perfect. Something you can never buy in a person is loyalty. Loyalty is earned, and loyalty is not common these days. Most hoes out here really be willing to backstab you for a slight grade increase. But no, no, no. You find a squad with some loyalty and a passion for not having to study, and you'll do better work than ever. To be honest, something that always made me laugh about my cheating is that it probably took more effort to organize all this stuff and cheat than it would have been to just, like, study for the test and get an A. But I had way more fun cheating on tests than I did studying. Like, do you know how much of a badge of honor it was to do an old-fashioned Olympic shuffle and get an A? It felt great. You know what doesn't feel great? Studying for eight hours and getting an A the legit way. That's not fun. That's not cool. That's lame. And, you know, if you are into studying, good for you. It's just not my cup of tea. If you do like something... I'm not going to knock you for it. If you like to study, if you like to get good grades through your own hard work and dedication, more power to you. By all means, I'm not telling you to cheat. It just wasn't for me. And uh, I had a lot of fun and made a lot of memories and made a lot of really good friends by cheating on tests. I know that sounds a little bit bizarre, but it's just the truth of the matter. But uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed. Follow me on Instagram at scrubby underscore YT. And hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Remember, don't get anyone pregnant. And if you do, make sure they're incredibly hot. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Your boy Scrubby's out. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got a cool Fortnite kill here, though. So I'm, I'm going to let it go just, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy right here, he comes in and I'm like, no, no, you can't. You can't fight me, buddy. Oh, yeah, get wrecked. Yeah, and then I kill him. But um, yeah, uh, on that note, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm out. Peace.